Jeff Reese Press Grease with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series. RWG OSD. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is the Hall Effect in stops. This is a bit wild. It's kind of long, but I think it's entertaining. Enjoy. All right, so I 3D printed these little pieces, and the Hall Effect will fit right inside of there. And you can almost see the holes worked, but they're not quite all the way through there quite right. So I'm going to just drill those out by hand. And I made the, the did the same method here as when I did the uh, stepper motor um, mounting brackets. I just pushed these in here until they fit nice. And I'm going to be putting a set screw in there to hold it in place. So let's go ahead and drill all these little holes out, get these little guys prepared. Alright, so as far as small drill bits, uh, if you go to Harbor Freight here in the U.S., you can pick up these little micro bits, which are pretty cool. Um, you can probably find these on eBay. I know you can find them on like Amazon or whatever. Uh, they come in different sizes. You don't really get to pick the sizes when you buy them from Harbor Freight. They send you what they have. Um, I actually do have a real small bit. But the problem, the problem with this bit is that if you try to put this in a chuck, it just falls out. It's too small. So these have a bigger chuck head on them, or a bigger uh, shaft on them, shank, so you can chuck them in a regular drill. However, I'm going to be in, uh, actually using a Dremel. Alright, they're not the best, but they will do exactly what I need, which is just hold the wires in place. Now I'm just going to tap those holes. Easy peasy. Oh, well, maybe. Alrighty, this is a, uh, what is it, 832, yeah, an 832, and a number, whatever the proper one that is, a number 27. Um, now what I'm going to do is cut these 832 set screws a little bit shorter, they're a little long. So I'm going to cut them a little shorter so that they are uh, a little more recessed. Cut about, I don't know, four threads off there. Alright, a little, little tip for you. You can use the Dremel and a cutoff wheel to cut these things, but if you purchase a good set of wire crimpers, you will find out that right here they actually have... Alright, it's kind of backwards for you probably. They actually have cutoffs. That's what these are. These are designed for cutoffs. As you can see, my 832, which I think is this size. <laughs> Apparently, I've broken one off in there. Um, but these actually are designed to cut bolts. That's what these are for. However, these are stainless. I'm kind of afraid to do that. I don't know what happened there. I guess I got that one stuck. But just so you know, you can use these to cut stuff off. And what happens is, is that there's threads in here. So you thread it in, right? You thread in the side you want to keep over here. You thread it in, and then when you cut it, it shears it off. But when you back the thread back out, it reforms the threads. So when I cut these with a cutoff wheel, I'm going to have a bad kind of spot there on the end. I'm going to have to f clean it up. Where this sort of does that already. So there you go. That's why I wear safety glasses. That friggin' hurts. Think it'll still work? <laughs> Not really. 
there we go now we have the short set screws and the pieces that are going to hold my whole effect sensors just right just perfect now we have to disassemble the entire printer to actually put these in that'll be a small chore yeah, well we'll make this fast alright boys and girls I'm gonna take this Saint Smart Hall sensor I'm going to desolder the Hall effect sensor put them in these fun little mounts that I made and attach some wires and heat shrinks to them so that's what we're gonna do and then I will have to solder some header pins in the, the replace the Hall effect sensor pins which I have some extras from something else so this will work nice cool let's do it just fucking do it man don't worry about that man just do it All right, there you go. Flush with the top. I put a dab of glue on the back side. Just a dab of super glue. Hold it in place, and then I will heat shrink and wire these guys. But that'll work great. Okay, so I've desoldered all of the pins off of both sides. A little trick is to uh, get your soldering iron on those pins and just slam it against the table and all the solder will fall out. And then the second tip is if you have a little solder, after you get the solders out of the holes, right, if you have a little bit of solder left in, like on the edge of the thing so you can't get the pin all the way in, if you just set the soldering iron right on the edge of the hole it will sort of bring all the solder to the outside of the hole. And then you can actually insert a pen. So what I actually plan on doing is turning this into a modular plug-and-play board. So I will have these pens sticking out the back and I will be able to just plug them directly into a secondary circuit board and then I can just replace these as needed if I explode them. So that's the idea behind doing this the way I'm doing. There you go. Not too bad. Not too bad. Plug and play. Hall effect sensors. I want to be able to adjust these still so I don't quite know where I'm going to put these yet because I'd like to be able to see the indicators but maybe I'll just tuck them under the bottom somewhere. Not sure how far I can run the Hall Effect sensor pins without having issues but I think we'll be fine because I can adjust it here for voltage because you have to add in a voltage drop across the wire. That's why you got to use good wire. Another little tip is if you tear, take a pair of pliers and sort of put them across the wires you can heat sink the wires so that you don't burn the chip up if the chip is sensitive so one way to get the solder out is just heat it up slam it against the table heat it up slam it against the table heat it up slam it against the table take the solder right out of there And then, like I said, if you just heat the edge, then you can get those completely, completely clean, and they can see all the way through. That's how we do 
All right, so the pins are quite bent up. I'm just going to take this pair of flat thingamabobs and try to straighten those up. Now, you can see there's a little solder blob on that one. If you just smash it both directions for a while, that solder blob will actually fall off. The other method is to just heat it up and scrape it off, but it seems to work in all kind of different ways. So earlier I tried to bend this a little bit like that and then slide it in here. There you go. Sure that was blurry. So what I did earlier, if I can get this in the camera, I just took a very fine little dab of super glue. That's it. Did you see that? Not much. Just placed it in there. Let it sit for a little bit. So it can cure in place. Once it's cured in place, it will look like this one. I can move the tabs and nothing happens. So that one's ready to go. On to the wire selection. So I had some ribbon cable here. I just grabbed what I had and pulled off the same colors and made three identical color scheme wire selections. So here I just stripped off the wire, uh, the end of the hollow sensors cut them off, strip the wires down, and then what I did is I tinned them, so this is called tinning, putting a little extra solder on the end of your wire before you start, always a wise choice. So what I decided to do is shove those guys way up in there and actually solder them to the pins that were inside those holes, and so I didn't actually have to put heat shrink on the outside. This actually worked really well, it was sort of unexpected to do it this way, but this was a lot easier than, than trying to heat shrink them outside and be concerned about the heat shrink. So the wire itself, I stripped it from each other, otherwise it would be bound together all three wires. And you can see how it's flexible on the end. But if you try to flex the part up here, where I did not separate the wires, they're really rigid and stiff. So this actually worked out great. Um, I suggest uh, sort of thinking about this when you do other projects, you can sort of just use the hole that you're going to be soldering into as your uh, your wire separation. So there you go. Not a problem. Looking good. All right, so I'm going to be mounting these small magnets that you see right here in the arms. So I need to test the magnets and find out which face works on which part of the hall sensor. So this part works on this side and it will not work if flipped over. So, we need to orientate our magnets correctly. So this is just a quick test to find out which way is which. Alright, so I've got the arms disassembled here. Remove power to that guy. Um, so some of you may be wondering, I basically have one more blank hole. This one. All the other holes are filled up except for this guy because that didn't quite work out. But worked out fine the way I have it now but not the way I intended originally with two bolts this is just too close so I have one more center bolt here and uh, basically that's where my magnets gonna go so I'm just gonna drill this out by hand and my magnet will just I'm just gonna glue it in there so let's do that so my drill bit is just barely undersized so that it, I can ream it out to make it just just right. There we go. I think I'll get the vacuum and vac that up. Okay, so the hole is like pretty well perfect. 
So I think what I'm going to do is actually attempt to press press one of these magnets in there. First I'm going to clean that hole up. Okay. So my Hall effect sensor needs to be orientated this way. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put a little black dot on there. Won't see it anyway. See if we can get it in there. Press fit in there just right. And then what I'll do is take a tiny little dab of epoxy and I'll just put it in that hole just to keep it in place. It's pretty well flush. Might tap it in there a fraction more. Alright, I've decided to take a punch and just, it's a flat punch. Just barely tap that guy. So I really want it to go in just a just a fraction more. Oh, you know what? We put it in backwards. Good job, us. <laughs> Let's try this again. All right, I'm gonna test this again because I put it in backwards the first time. So there you go. We're good. Good sensing depth. So, good. Okay guys, so I found out it's almost easier to just tap it with a hammer since it's so close anyway. So just a little tap. That really brings it flush. Seems to work better than that little punch. Alright, so I got some regular two-part epoxy. I'm just going to mix it up and I'm just going to put a little bitty dab down in there just to make sure that guy don't move because that would be unpleasant. So I'll probably use uh, even like a toothpick or a small tube. i got to find something to be honest with you. See what I got laying around. Alright guys, the only thing I could really find just laying around was a drill bit. So I'm going to use the back of a drill bit. I'm just going to get a tiny little bit so it's almost running off. And just sort of smear it in there. So let me get you a close up of that. Alright, this is not a very good shot, but I'm going to take this. Uh, I'm basically just going to get enough so it's sort of running off like that and then I'm just going to put it in the hole and sort of run it in circles and that's just a tiny little bit just enough to keep it in place alright guys so I want to put the Hall effects sensors on the inside of this channel and because there's a a bolt, the, how this thing fits together, there's a bolt holder right here. I can't really get the wire through there any good way. So I'm going to drill straight through the bolt. I'm going to use the bolt as my wire feed through. It's kind of a strange and silly idea. There are a few other options, but I want to do it that way for a couple other reasons. So let's go attempt to drill six of these out. Alright, so I've got this set up sort of backwards. These are outside jaw chucks. But uh, since I already got them in here, I figured I would just leave them in there. And they should be okay. They should be centered. That doesn't look very centered, does it? Because they don't really grind the very inside of these for precision. 
these they look like they did, but let's turn the bolt and see if we can get anything different. It does not look very happy. I think we're going to do it anyway, just as it is. So, let me give you guys a little tip. This is amazing cutting fluid. Tap Magic. It, I, it's really designed for tapping. Like, I think that's its original intended purpose. But it also works extremely well for drilling operations. I'm not going to use a center drill. I'm just going to see how it reacts. And we'll go from there. Okay, we got through it. Let's just see how it looks. Right in the center. Look at that. So I was hoping the drill bit was sort of self center with the compression that was already in there. And it looks like it did a pretty good job, so we'll see if all of them turn out this way. Hollow bolt. Definitely use cutting oil when cutting bolts and such. That drill bit feels pretty dull already. Okay, well there they are. I actually did get through all six of the ones I needed. That one didn't quite come through the center very well. The rest of them are pretty darn centered. Um, the drill bit surprisingly looks better than I thought it would, but you can see how, how bad it looks. So if you can imagine what would happen if you did not use cutting oil, probably wouldn't even have got through one. If you're lucky, maybe one. Definitely use cutting oil. FYI, they make Tap Magic aluminum. Definitely use the right stuff for the right stuff. This is good stuff right here. All right, well, we got through it. We've done everything we needed to do to actually put these together and test them. Although I'm not going to show you how I put them together in this video because there'll be a video later where it's, I have to tear everything down and put it back together. For testing purposes, I'll show you what's next in the upcoming videos.